I've got a ton of innovations to show you from CES, and while many products did impress, a few were outright confusing or downright didn't work. Case in point, most of the humanoid robots. You'd expect CES to showcase the most impressive robots in the world, but that's simply not true. In fact, what I saw was shocking. Most of the robots looked like this one, a half-functioning kind of hunk of metal that was actually tethered to a laptop. Meanwhile, engineers were constantly having to care for it like a mother and like an infant child. It was really a total joke. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, you had some robots that moved and were agile and they moved quite well, but they would just mumble responses from ChatGPT, something that Siri and Alexa can do on our phones for like a decade. So part of CES was a total joke, but there were some impressive innovations at the show. One area that has advanced were smart glasses. Now, keep in mind, most of it was simply integrating speakers and voice commands into the side of the frames, but there were plenty of use cases. One of the most impressive pairs was from Amazon, and it featured Alexa Assistant built right in. Unlike other frames I tested, the speaker quality was actually quite good, and the price on these were just under $400. Another feature coming to smart glasses is sound enhancement. Think of that as like a hearing aid. Luxottica has partnered with Nuance Audio to produce these sound enhancing frames. These glasses can amplify sound kind of in noisy environments like a restaurant or even like the consumer electronics show. After testing them myself, I can say the glasses did work as advertised, but the sound quality was really not all that good. But not all vision tech was centered around smart glasses. Case in point, iBot is an eye exam kiosk based out of Boston. Basically, it was a kiosk that gave you an eye exam in just a couple of minutes, but it doesn't replace your eye doctor. That's because the data is actually sent back to a real doctor who then prepares your prescription in about, uh, about 24 hours or so. The patient cost on this one was about $20 per exam. Now, staying in kind of the kiosk and vending machine type of theme, there was another impressive company. And that was Sweet Robo. They didn't have the most prominent booth. It wasn't certainly the largest eater, but it drew big, big crowds. The colorful vending machines could create custom balloons and cell phone cases. On the food side and kind of the treat side, maybe the more traditional vending machine side, the company had working vending machines for popcorn, there was one for candy, and there was one for ice cream. With the market kind of already saturated with soda and snack machines pretty much anywhere, these vending machines were kind of a cool alternative for maybe a vending machine entrepreneur, maybe looking to expand their business and expand into other markets. Now, speaking of business, there's likely no business in more demand than NVIDIA's. You've probably heard of NVIDIA's latest Grace Blackwell chip. It might even be why you invested in NVIDIA, but you probably haven't seen it. Well, here it is. Amidst all the crazy tech at CES where there was expensive supercars and toys, they dominated the entire convention hall, this Grace Blackwell server stands out as probably one of the priciest items on display. Now, when it comes to price and tech, this next gadget actually caught my eye. Lenovo's latest ThinkBook features an expanding 14-inch display. It was really cool. The price, though, it's not cheap. This laptop is expected to start at $34.99. Now, in kind of speaking of impressive screen technology, one thing that always blows my mind each year are these micro LED TVs. If you've never seen one of these in person, it will literally blow your mind. And it'll make you want to buy it. And the video that I have here just doesn't do it justice. The colors just explode on a micro LED TV but it all comes at a cost. In fact, the cost over the last year really hasn't come down. These ultra high-end TVDs can run over $100,000 or more. So you won't see one in my living room anytime soon, but they're just spectacular. Now, Sony has been a staple in our living rooms with TVs and VCRs and Playstations, but what Sony shows off at CES tends to be a little bit different. And this year's CES, Sony showed off a vehicle processing system. This allows filmmakers to gather footage of real terrain, and then they simulate a vehicle kind of driving over it. It was really cool. Now, staying with vehicles, you might expect Mercedes or maybe BMW to grab headlines at CES, but instead it was Waymo. 
The company is beating the autonomous driving giants like Uber and Tesla to the punch with cars already on the road in the United States. Cruising the streets currently is this Jaguar model. In fact, I saw maybe a dozen of them when I was in San Francisco just this past weekend. But soon, the company will be rolling out this Hyundai Ion IQ model with initial testing beginning later this year. On the larger side, Waymo has partnered with Zeker on a van that is expected to roll out without a steering wheel or pedal sometime in the United States. Another company I didn't expect to see showing off car tech was actually Amazon. Did you know that you can actually buy a car on Amazon right now? That's right, Amazon was showing off their latest collaboration with Hyundai, where you can buy a vehicle like right off the Amazon app. The feature literally just rolled out in December and allows buyers to select the car, value like your trade-in, and even get financing directly from the Amazon website. An Amazon rep said that the company is expecting more automakers to offer more cars on for sale on the platform here relatively soon. Folks, that wraps it up from CES 2025. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'll probably be back next year. I'll see you then.